All right, welcome to chapter 11. Chapter 11 is all about alkynes. We see a lot of similarities to alkenes. And we'll uh, uh, kind of unpack that. Okay, so chapter 11, alkynes. Triple bonds. Basically two kinds of alkynes. We have a triple bond internally. Okay, two CH3s or, or R groups on each side. That's an internal, right? The alkyne is internal. And then terminals, as we'll see, are pretty special. And sometimes we draw the triple bond like that. We leave the carbon off, okay? We don't show the C. This is, these are terminal, okay? So internal and terminal, kind of like alkenes, but they're a little simpler with alkynes. There's only two possibilities. This H, as we're gonna see, is very special. PKA about 25 that we can deprotonate it easier than we can other CH bonds. Right, we said alkyne CHs were the worst acids you'll ever see. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I rephrase that. Al alkanes, okay, just I misspoke. Alkane CHs are the worst acids you'll ever see. So regular CH bonds with nothing else. Alkyne CHs are pretty decent acids. We can deprotonate that pretty well, okay? So C to the N, H2N minus two is our, um, our formula for these, we have two degrees of unsaturation. We introduced that term last chapter. Two degrees of unsaturation means that uh, there's two, hydro two equivalents of H2 missing, okay? Uh, recall that we talked about the triple bond and what it actually looks like. It's a cylinder of electron density. It's SP hybridized. This bond angle is 180 degrees. This carbon, both carbons are sp. And we can kind of think about that like so. There's our first pi bond, okay? We have a carbon-carbon bond. That's a csp orbital. That's a single bond there. csp, csp forming that bond. And then csp, h1s forming each of the ch bonds. Then we have one pi um, bond made up of p orbitals, right? And you got a double bond there, right? Electron density above and below. And then we have this, kind of try to show some perspective. That orbital is in the back. It's a lot harder to draw. I'll just say, I'm not going to ask you to draw this one uh, because it's uh, a little more complicated. And then these kind of come out towards us, right? We could kind of shadow these if we wanted to. They're coming out towards us. But that's the idea, is you have a set of p orbitals above and below, and a set of p orbitals in front and back, each lobe, right? And so there's electron density out front and electron density in back. What that equates to is you have essentially a cylinder of electron density, okay? I can't really draw a cylinder very well, but you have a cylinder, a tube, this whole thing here, there's electron density all the way around, okay? Again, this, this is a sigma bond in here, these two pi bonds together kind of wrap a cylinder of electron density. Okay, that's just a brief introduction. Uh, nomenclature is 11.2. As we've seen, we don't do a lot of naming in class. We can, we can touch on those things, but let's look at a, uh, an example here, a skeletal structure. Okay, I've given you the numbering here. The parent is oct, okay? It's not octane, it's octine. Where does the alkyne begin? It's at the three position, so this is oct, uh, three octine. Okay, so instead of ac octane and octene for alkenes, alkenes and alkenes respectively, right? We go oct octane, octene, octine, okay? And then we have two methyl groups, CH3s, at the six position. So it's a 6,6 dimethyl 
three octine, okay? The point of unsaturation takes precedent, okay? <clears throat> um, I'm going to tell you something here that the first site of unsaturation is going to take precedent. But I'm not going to make you name dienes or dienes or enines. Okay, this is an enine. Just want to give you an example. You don't actually have to know this, but I want you to be aware. The first site of unsaturation, double bond or triple bond, okay, is going to be where we start. Okay, so we got a, we got a six, we got a methyl group at five, we got a six carbon chain. 5-methyl, now we have to distinguish 4-hexene-1-ine, okay? Like I said, we're not going to do these, but I just want you to be aware of that. But at least that, you know, it's, a, it's another naming example, okay? Uh, there's plenty in the book. Keep working on those, okay? A couple common names or common substituents. Okay. I call this one F, ethinyl. It's a Y. Ethinyl. Okay. This group here is called an ethinyl cyclopentane. It's just a way we can have a, a common sort of a common name or a common substituent. Okay. I want you to be aware that this one is acetylene. Okay. And in general, if you have two alkynes. Then it's a diion. You should know this, this, that name, acetylene. That's a common name, um, but it's not that big a deal. Diion, okay. Uh, two alkynes is a diion, and uh, so that's a bit of nomenclature. Work those problems, etc. Eleven point three. Physical properties. Okay, we're gonna we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this. Physical properties are very similar to alkenes. Okay. Uh, 11.4 as well, interesting alkynes. We're not going to cover per se, but you should, you should glance at these things. There's some really interesting alkynes. Ethyl estradiol is a synthetic estrogen. There's an example in the book, and um, et cetera. There's a lot of interesting alkynes. 11.5, though, is prep, and we use this as review. We kind of mentioned this in class. We use this as review. So how do we prepare alkynes? Let's review chapter 10. Uh, I'm sorry, not chapter 10. Chapter 8 is how we did this. LDA, two equivalents, right? We get an alkyne. Okay, you can have a geminal dichloride or a geminal dibromide, or you can have a vicinal, meaning they're on different carbons. It doesn't matter. Potassium tert-butoxide, two equivalents, same idea. And we can get our phenyls on either side of the alkyne. Okay? So that's just a review of preparation. Let's do a retrosynthesis problem. Let's say we want to make this from an alkene. There's ways we could make the alkene, but let's say I gave you that. And what do we do here? We need to use a dibromide or a dichloride right what reagent will we use we just talked about that KOT butyl right we don't have to um, you don't have to say two equivalents I don't really care about that uh, how do we make a dibromide right we need to add BR2 to an alkene okay so that's just a, a bit of review now let's talk about 11.6 alkyne reactions. 
all kinds of reactions. All kinds of reactions. Bad joke. Let's see who's watching the video. Uh, alkyne reactions. Okay. Um, there are similar reactions that we can do addition, right? We have unsaturation. We can do addition reactions. There's a special kind of alkyne that we mentioned this at the very beginning. A terminal alkyne can be treated with a base. We'll talk more about this and what kinds of bases will suffice and things like that, but the base is going to deprotonate. Give you an anion. That anion can then react with some electrophile and form a new bond. We'll, we'll see specifics of this as we go. Again, there's a carbon right here that's implied. There's no C written, so we could write this like this as well, but you don't want to draw a line from that triple bond. That one's acceptable, but you don't want to draw a line with a, with a charge, okay? The charge is on the carbon, which is on the alkyne. Remember, this is SP, which is why it's these are more acidic, right? We talked about that early on. This H is more acidic. Why? Because this is SP hybridized. That lone pair is held closer to the nucleus. It's a more stable anion than a um, and its counterparts, uh, sp2 or sp3. Okay, so you can go kind of go back and look at the hybridization effect in chapter two if you'd like. Okay, so that's a very special reaction for a terminal alkyne. Okay. Now, terminals and other alkynes can undergo addition, R1, R2. We can treat with two equivalents of X, Y, and we get some sort of distribution of X and Y. Okay, again, we're going to look at specifics. So R, I'm sorry, R2 and R1. This is just a general reaction. We just are going to add, like we did with chapter 10, alkenes, we're going to add X, Y across the double bond. We're going to add it twice, okay? Again, the specific reactions will be what is asked. So XY adds across, you get an alkene with XY on it, and then it adds across again. And you can look at 11.6a, uh, uh, page 432. Uh, you can see there's an intermediate alkene there, okay? So uh, let's introduce our pinwheel, okay? And these are a little harder to follow. You're going to have to do the mechanisms, but they're a little... Um, some of them are, are less obvious, okay? So let's, let's show an example of an ethyl group attached to an alkyne. We've got a terminal alkyne, and we're gonna add, we're gonna do hydrohalogenation, HX, two equivalents. What do two equivalents give you? You're gonna get a dihalide. Dihalide. Okay. We talked about how we can use those to make alkynes. You can also make them from alkynes. Okay. X2, always two equivalents, or at least if you want to fully react it. In principle, we could we could maybe stop if we had one equivalent. We might talk about that a little bit. But halogenation, so hydrohalogenation. Right, HX twice, halogenation, chlorination, and bromination, really. You get a tetrahalide. Four of them, which is kind of weird. Tetrahalide. Okay, now the other two are, are much harder to follow, and we're going to have to introduce some new things a few new things as we talk about them, but H2O, H2SO4 catalyst. Remember we talked about hydration, we're gonna protonate the alkyne, and we need another reagent in here, which 
I'm not gonna we're not gonna talk a lot about this. This is another catalyst, mercury sulfate. Okay, it, it just helps the alkynes hydrate. Okay, and it's um, just a. It, I want you to associate mercury with the alkynes. We're not going to incorporate it into the mechanism. Okay, but we're going to get a ketone here. So we're going to spend time on these and make sure they make sense. Okay. And right now we're kind of doing the overview thing. Okay. So you get a ketone. And then lastly, you can do hydroboration, oxidation, H2O2, NaOH. Okay, that's a boron there, R2BH. Now you get an aldehyde. So we're going to see some of the same rules about regioselectivity, anti marconikov all that kind of stuff. Okay, we get an aldehyde. So we're going to see these two are connected and they give opposite regioisomers, etc. Okay, so this is hydration here, adding water. This is hydroboration. Okay, hydro for H or hydrogen, sometimes hydro and um, sounds similar for hydrogen or, or water, okay? But there's just four major reactions that are very different than the acid-base reaction we just talked about there, addition, okay? Uh, let's return to the acid-base thing just to reiterate. Uh, equilibrium, okay? We said these alkynes are far more acidic than alkenes or even al al I mean, sorry, alkanes and even alkenes. It's this triple bond, right? And so some base can deprotonate. And in principle, everything's in equilibrium. What we're saying is, depending on the base, we can deprotonate, form another base, and protonate that base, the starting base, OK? So we have acid, base, conjugate, base, conjugate, acid. The question is, which one's the stronger acid? Okay, which base and which base is weaker? Okay. So I'm just going to give you some suitable bases. These things are not as easily fit into trends. We can compare alkynes with alkenes with alkanes and talk about a hybridization effect. But when we start crossing effects, to some degree, we just need to memorize this. We can use the element effect to rationalize some of this, okay? But these two are strong enough. And we can see the pKa of their conjugate acids are strong enough. Or, I'm sorry, they're weak enough that they make some strong enough bases, okay? Again, this is pKa 25 for the alkyne, but unsuitable bases are, are oxygen. So what I want you to sort of memorize is that oxygen just is not a strong enough base to deprotonate. Okay, so even potassium terpetoxide, which we stressed is a nice non-nucleophilic base, it's just not strong enough. Oxygen is not a, as strong a base as nitrogen or hydrogen. Okay, The pK here for, for H2O is 15.7 or for tert butyl alcohol is 18. Okay, so these are weaker bases. Again, we can rationalize all this by the element effect. Okay, these are weaker bases on the bottom, these are stronger bases. We can use them here, they're suitable. Okay, so these are the types of bases that we would use. And um, again, we rationalize this as SP hybridized. That is held closer to the nucleus than a, a typical carbanion uh, from an alkane or an alkene. Okay, so hybridization effect. It's the, the last of our four effects in chapter two. You can go back and kind of reread that if you wanted to. Okay. So that's just an introduction to alkynes. We can. Um, uh, deprotonate terminal alkynes very well and use them. We're going to see that's very useful for forming carbon-carbon bonds. And then we can do a lot of the same reactions, uh, the addition reactions that we learned uh, about alkenes. Uh, 
uh, on these. Okay, so we'll come back next time and begin talking about that.